The Gigantic community is one of the best communities I've ever been in, and I think probably SoFish can feel the exact same way. Yeah, man. You know, like, everybody at Motiga just poured their heart into this game. And it's not any one person's fault what happened to Gigantic. You know, really, the game released at the wrong time. So it's just, it's a bummer. Given that you've clicked on this video, it would be fair to assume that you're already familiar with the game Gigantic. Though if you're one of the 10 followers who subscribed after my last video, to keep this video concise, I recommend watching the video by Nerdslayer Studios, who goes into depth on the birth, coming of age, and death of Gigantic. But so you don't have to click off this video and go watch that one right now, I'll give you a brief summary. Long story short, Gigantic was one of the hero-based shooter games, home to the cemetery of other titles that were outfitnessed by the AAA powerhouse, Overwatch. Though both games were announced to the market in the same year, the quirky indie titles simply couldn't compete with the already top of the food chain company, Blizzard, and died only a year after formal release. Despite being surrounded by many other graves of the genre, there was something about Gigantic that kept people mourning over its tomb in particular. Without sounding too overzealous, Gigantic was a game that left an impression on me. It was everything that I could have wanted from a game without all the things that I hate about the modern game scene. I can go on about the priority of competitive diss over innovation and creativity, though I would have to say that the quality that made Gigantic unique from the other big titles was its distinct personality. The best way to illustrate this feeling is to describe Gigantic to be like a homemade batch of cookies, and for games like Overwatch to be as a box of Oreo. Though the freeze-dried cookies are made perfectly with an iconic shape and perfected recipe, and homemade cookies are rough around the edges and sometimes come out wonky, nothing can compare to the good intentions made behind every homemade cookie. Since Gigantic was made by an indie company, it has all the homemade aromas of a passion project, while I find that many AAA companies have the cookie-cutter cynicism of corporate greed. Come to think of it, I almost don't play any multiplayer games nowadays, because cynically made games create a cynically made community, which erodes the overall quality of the work. You can have a fantastical and charming world like Paladins be completely polluted by overly competitive players. Naturally, these cynical games have players that are obsessed with competition and completely undermine the artistic intention of gaming, or put in less pretentious language. We can often forget that gaming is a form of art and not a sport. Players that see gaming as an art form, like me, see gaming as an escape from our cold, grimy reality. The way I see it, reality is already a battlefield with hierarchies in every setting. Gaming, or art in general, should give people a break from the grind of life. On the other side, players that see gaming as a sport play not to get lost in the fantastical setting of the game, but to dominate other players and rise to the top. Not to say having an arena to compete in that doesn't have any real consequences isn't fun, but a lot of times competitive players just take things too seriously. I'm sure you've had an experience where a salty player sent you a malicious message after a game because you wanted to experiment with a new character in competitive play. After the death of Gigantic, I gave Paladins a try and was ashamed to see the clear shift between community affects. Like, why are players so toxic and hostile with a game with cute characters like this? Anyways, not to get off track as I said I wouldn't just a bit ago. Gigantic was never a game that I felt had this issue, because the game was made for passion and not for profit. Consequentially, the personality of the game would reflect the same morale. To me, Gigantic was the creative kid who sat alone in art class because they were too shy to sit with the artist click, but too quirky to fit in with the others. From the creators, to the art style, to the game mechanics, everything about it seemed so thoughtful. Like, if only given the chance to shine, they could offer something truly special. Despite how cool Gigantic was, it seems like we wouldn't see how cool they were until it was the end of the school year and we'd never see them again. My apartment was in the Seattle area and I was here in Redwood City for like seven or eight months working at Perfect World on the Mochica payroll and I can attest to, you know, all right, maybe I'm a little biased. You can see this however you want, but definitely Perfect World was I mean, really kicking ass. I mean, everybody here wanted this game to succeed. Of course, yeah. that's what everybody wants, right? Everybody in game development wants to create a kick-ass game. You want to create a fun experience for people. I admire the amount of passion that was put into the game. It was uh, yeah. immeasurably... I've had, I've had set these tell me multiple times how there were people working for, for nothing on the game. And it's... Yep. It's insane that, that people would do that, but... Yeah, really very much a passion project. Like you said, people weren't getting paid, and they were working on this game. Tons of late nights, you know, like, just in, internal struggles about how the game should be made over really stupid, menial shit. 
like what color something should be, you know, people just got that invested in the game that there were that, that people were willing to like just invest their entire heart and soul into Gigantic. Yeah. As described in the video I recommended earlier, Gigantic would fall tragically. So tragically that many people are still hooked on Gigantic to this day. On the Gigantic discords and forums, you'll see many sappy supporters reminiscing on the good old days. After being dead for so many years, you would have thought the fire would have completely fizzled out. Sure, the game has a small fan base, but they make up for their size with enthusiasm, and born from that undying fervor and despair surrounding the game, many people would try to bring Gigantic back from the dead. I'll be back when the storm calms down. Hey everybody, Mr. Fancy Pants here. People have been asking us for some time now, what exactly is Project Stamina? Uh, it's been a little unclear as to whether we've been making a reskinning of another game or if we're making something entirely new. This presentation is here to help put some of those questions to rest and give you, our wonderful community, a better idea about what exactly it is we're making. So Project Stamina is a spiritual successor. We are making an entirely new game with new content and a new, new systems that are very much based on the existing systems that we all fell in love with. So many are still in production. The game with the most promise seems to be a game going by the name Project Stamina. A team of artists, programmers, and talented people alike decided to come together to not only resurrect the shorter lived gigantic from the grave, but to bring it back stronger and better than before. Immediately, we can see Project Stamina improving on many of the mistakes that led to the failure of Gigantic. First, Project Stamina has a Patreon, something that I wish Gigantic could have attempted as a last-ditch effort before pulling the plug. Secondly, engaging with the community. With the use of Patreon and social media, Project Stamina has been generous by taking suggestions from the community. In fact, not too long ago, Project Stamina would release a stream showing off a community-inspired official character. Lastly, Project Stamina is quite transparent. Not until taking a hiatus, Project Stamina has kept donors on the know with monthly streams and status updates. In these streams and updates, it seems the project is going swimmingly, with six unique characters, beautiful concept art, and an already impressive game showcase. Fans, including myself, are pumped to see our favorite game not just come back from the dead, but born a phoenix, possibly better than it was before. Though of course, this would seem too good to be true. After a final update last May, Project Stamina would go missing. For a few months, I had assumed the team was taking a long break, and after a few more months of silence, the streams had left my focus. Admittedly, I had forgotten about the project, but one day while reminiscing about Gigantic, I eventually came back to the Project Stamina YouTube page to rekindle my hope. I was confused to see that there haven't been any update streams since the last time I checked the page. I went to check Twitch where the team usually streams, and nothing there either. I checked their Twitter and they haven't said anything since their last tweet in June. May, if we're only counting independent tweets. Of course, I wouldn't be the only one worried about this sudden disappearance, especially since they had an active Patreon with enthusiastic donors. As a last result, and only a last result, I went on Reddit to see if anyone had any insight to the eerie silence of what I found was way more serious than I could have ever guessed. Though I find going on Reddit to be a daunting task, thanks to the armchair detectives of Reddit, the reconnaissance for this video became way less stressful. In a post by hashtag NomNom, the situation was made clear and put into a timeline. He writes, I can help with this. I was in the Discord before everything went private, and paid close attention to everything that happened. Some insight first. The producer of Project Stamina had full control of pretty much everything. He owned the Discord, handled the Patreon account, and wrote all the project status updates, which were monthly. The producer and the project's four main leads had a meeting discussing their grievances with the producer. He never let them review the project status update post, but would often promise more in these posts than what the team agreed on in meetings prior to posting the status update. This had happened almost every post for the entirety of the project, so the devs were fed up. They asked him to step down, otherwise they would all leave. The producer didn't want to give up his rights, 
so we asked for a large sum of money over the IP. Devs didn't pay, and he didn't step down, and things got worse. There were many misunderstandings between what either party wanted, which led to a lot more stress than should have happened. After not getting what they wanted, the leads quit. The day after, though the producer was unable to access the project's files, basically everything that was created for the project. While well, he was eventually able to regain access to them, it worried him and muted the devs that were leaving the project, having them unable to read or reply to anything. The rest of this day's summary was redacted by the poster. When first reading this about the producer's influence over their project, I was quite shocked to find out how much authority they had, but come to find out this amount of control isn't surprising. In my opinion, I think more democracies should be brought to the workplace anyways, especially for the kinds of projects like these that are made for the sake of creativity. If they were all working for a medicine company, then it would make sense to have such a top-down approach, because there just isn't too much time for democracy in those vast and vital businesses. I absolutely hate it when creative projects are rushed out and workers are forced to crunch, because the product is almost always ruined. One of the most prominent critiques customers give to games these days is, it would have been perfect if given another year to develop. Video games, which are made purely for the sake of making the world a more enjoyable place, should be created with that in mind. Meaning, the satisfaction of the talent isn't a waste of concern. Continuing on, June 18th, between now and the week prior, someone leaked what was said in the meeting in another Discord, Gigantic Heaven. These messages were one-sided and put the producer in a bad light. So many of them invaded the PS Discord, which was quiet about the whole situation up until now, and leaked the messages. That night, the producer stated he was going radio silent, but the GH Discord users were very persistent and angry with him especially on why the devs were muted. For legal reasons, all of the team were under a non-disclosure agreement, so many of their questions weren't able to be answered. June 24th, after legal review and making sure he had his facts straight, the producer released his statement. A couple hours later, some rebuttals to his statement came out, and the producer stepped down. About 20 minutes later, the majority of the server would be hidden. Unfortunately, I had just gotten off work right before everything got hidden, so I was unaware of why things escalated so quickly on the 24th. But there's more going on behind the scenes than people realize. This project is not confirmed closed or dead, but for the time being there's going to be little progress made. We've given the benefit of the doubt since I wasn't present to witness this event. This comment is very insightful. Here are a few more posts on Reddit that I thought were relevant to share. I got started with this game in the community just as a content creator, like just making stupid YouTube videos. And Motiga picked me up and dude, it's like this game launched my career in the video game industry, so I owe so much to all these people who participated in this game and who, you know, kind of helped me along with my career and all the awesome people. And like, that's, that's the main thing, right? The, I mean, we won't be able to play the game come Tuesday, but everybody in the community is still going to be here. And we can still hang out and chat. And, you know, if anybody wants to share some memories or your emotions, definitely just hit me up on Discord and I'll be there. So, yeah, if you're just chilling at home, or, you know, you're playing some games or eating New England clam chowder or whatever, just send me a message. So, until next time. I'll see you on the airship. You almost got it. What we know now is that four important members of the team could be leaving. Tinnatus, the one who started the project and the only one who has confirmed that he is done. Failco, the art director. Pat, the 3D artist. And Trax, the software engineer. And the rest of the post basically co-signs the events spoken in the previous post. If the warning of this user is to be assumed correct, this would mean definite doom for Project Stamina, because all of these talents are critical to the identity of this project. Here are the last posts that I thought were worth putting in the video. It's 99% dead. From the community standpoint, Mr. Fancy Pants was the one who paused this issue. We all want the game to go to the devs. Issue is, Fancy Pants has an asking price of $250,000. Sources I won't name have said, Fancy Pants said, I'm willing to take everything down with me. The 1% chance came from the unpaid labor that was used to support Fancy's LLC. This could possibly push the IP to the devs, but only if one of them has lawyers involved. This also would cost thousands. And there's also this post. Is there any hope left for Project Stamina? And how do I get in contact with the devs? I feel like Project Stamina has gave me and many others hope that Gigantic could have its legacy rebuilt and improved upon. I just ask if I should even bother with Project Stamina, or if it's just gone and there's no hope. What happened anyway? And whose fault is it? Can we replace whoever's fault it was and put it back together? I heard of Ravenblade and whatnot. At the same time, 
I don't want all the work that went into Project Stamina to go to waste. If you quit developing it, give another dev team the rights to it so they can work with it or put it under Creative Commons, allowing everyone to pick apart the work and reassemble it. Lastly, I want to get in contact with the devs, or anyone who has worked on it, as I need insight and have some questions. I believe this post captures the feeling that most of us feel. I'm sure the developers know, but this project is very meaningful to many people. We've all seen our favorite game fade away, just because it couldn't compete in the corporate food chain. And to see very talented people come together and make a video game for passion and not for profit is inspirational. So I ask, if anyone does see this video, no matter who you are, that you not lose hope for this game. I made my last video on the retirement of a beloved YouTuber, and he came back not too long after my upload. Hopefully this video will age poorly too. Thanks for watching. Wait, what's this? Hello everyone, we know you have been waiting on an update from us, and we appreciate your patience. Many of you are asking what will become of Project Stamina, and if work on this game will continue. This summer, this game is potentially only three weeks away from probable release. Huh. Well that's good news. I started writing this script last fall and I'm only finishing this video now because I've been held up with issues in the real world. Maybe it's a good thing that it took this long. I avoided having to make a follow-up video that would probably take just as much time. Anyways, if you watch to the end, make sure you like and subscribe because I have even more scripts in the work that I'm sure won't age poorly. Or at least I hope so. Oh, and one more thing, don't forget to hit the bell because as you see, my schedule is a bit erratic. Okay, bye for real this time.